Hey, how's it going guys? Mr. Boss for the win here. And in today's Red Dead Redemption 2 video, I'm gonna be telling you guys about 15 things you simply don't know about, including some helpful tips, tricks, and a whole lot more. All right, so I can't tell you how useful this first tip is gonna be for traveling at night or for hunting. There was a, a trick that you could use similar like this in single player, but up until recently, I didn't know one existed for online. And that is how you can use two items at once. In particular, the lantern and then anything else you want. The lasso, a weapon, a knife, whatever the case is. So again, this is incredibly useful for hunting at night, for traveling at night, and it's incredibly easy to set up. So the first thing you're gonna need to do is find an NPC and then kill them. Now, once you've killed them, what you wanna do is equip your lantern. Now, after you've equipped your lantern, from there, you want to simply pick up the NPC's body. What your character is gonna do is he's gonna put the lantern on his hip, which is actually something that our characters clearly can do, as you can see, but it's not an option to do normally. And then from there, you wanna open up the online menu, go to options, and then hit respawn. And you'll notice that once you've respawned, now you will have the lantern on your hip, but you will be able to pull out other things and still keep it on your hip, illuminating the world around you. So again, whether you want that to be a bow or a weapon or a pistol or whatever the case is, it will still stay on your hip. It will also still stay on your hip if you get on your horse too, which means you'll be able to travel via horseback and have a lit path for you, which is quite nice. Now, if you want this to go away, if for whatever reason you're no longer a fan of it, all you have to do is take your lantern out and then put it away and it will go back away into its normal spot. Also, I noticed that fast traveling, like fast traveling does most things, completely resets your character and your horse. So if you fast travel somewhere, this will no longer have an effect. But once again, I can't tell you how useful something like this is, especially for me, someone who likes to hunt it at night and someone who likes to do things at all hours of the day in Red Dead Online. This is so useful for lighting the way because sometimes it is very, very hard to see. And uh, this is gonna be so helpful for my day-to-day -day travels. Tip number two today, as I'm sure many of you guys know, there's only sort of one safe area in the game and that is at your camp. Well, be careful. You want to make sure you're not just standing in your camp because you can actually be pushed out of it. Like if someone has a horse or if they just walk up to you, they can physically just push you out of the camp where they can then shoot you and cause damage to you. So that's not good. What you want to do is if you're going to go AFK in your camp, you want to sit down at the table. If you're sitting down at the table, no one will be able to to interact with you. Now sort of building off of that, something you might not have known that occurs at your camp is your cores will regenerate. Now the rate and the level at which they regenerate at will all depend on any of the upgrades you have, but this is quite nice. If you ever wanted to regenerate your cores for free without using tonics or provisions, all you have to do is go to the camp and you can just wait there for about a minute and your cores should be almost refilled, if not 100% filled all of the way. So that right there is quite useful. Now, another thing you can do at camp, and this is something you guys have been asking me a lot about is, Mr. Boss, how do I not become underweight? Just like in single player, online has that dynamic weight where you can be you know, average, underweight, overweight. A lot of you guys seem to be underweight right now. The easiest way in which you can gain weight is by cooking food at your campfire. That seems to be the best bet. But instead of just eating the food back to back to back, what you wanna do is eat food and then join a new lobby. Eat food, join a new lobby. What joining a new lobby simulates in online is the passing of a day. So in single player, you have the option to sleep. There's time that passes by, but you don't really experience that in online. But you can do that by actually switching sessions. And if you do that over and over and over again, you will end up gaining weight. So that's a way in which you can do that. Uh, one thing I wanna give you guys a quick warning about. Right now, the only equipment that you can upgrade at your camp is a fast travel post. One that you will see very similarly in all of the cities. Um, I'm sure most of you guys are not rank 65 right now, nor do you have 112 gold to spare. Because guess what? Even if you have the fast travel post unlocked at your camp, it's still not free. It costs the same amount of money as if you were to go to a city and fast travel. 
So literally the only perk of having this is it's at your camp. And I'm never at my camp enough for this to be worth it. And you probably are in the same boat where it's really not worth it for you to do something like this either. Moving on with our next tip, a lot of you guys seem to be struggling with gathering cold weather outfits. Now, this is not surprising because a lot of the cold weather material that you need is either locked behind gold bars or is going to be locked behind a specific rank. Now, the game will actually tell you if you're piecing together things that will make for a suitable cold weather outfit. So you kind of just need to look for pieces like that. Sort of use common sense like coats and vests. And if you're buying shirts, you're going to need more than just like the standard over shirt in order to get sort of a warm weather outfit that has that protection. Now, if you're still struggling to come up with something or you don't have the ability to, there's actually a cold weather outfit if you have a persistent posse. So yes, this does cost $200 to actually form. However, maybe your friend has a persistent posse that they can invite you to. And if you're the leader of a persistent posse, you can actually change the outfits of yourself and your crew members, very similar to how it was in GTA Online. And one of the outfits gives cold weather protection. So creating average outfits are very easy to do. Creating hot weather outfits are very easy, but until everyone is a super high rank or has unlocked more clothing options, creating that cold weather gear is much harder. So that's a way in which you can sort of bypass that or get around it. Another way in which you can get treasure maps in Red Dead Online is if you actually come across ambushes. Now, gang ambushes are similar to the gang hideouts. They sort of spawn randomly throughout the world, but what I'll do right now is actually show you a map of all the known ambushes so far. So the red X's, those are gang hideout locations. However, the blue sort of marks on the roads those are where ambushes will occur. So you can see a couple of them there, some near Big Valley, some near the Dakota River, some are near Cumberland Forest, others near Oak Cray's Run, and some near the Bayou uh, and Lackey. So if you go to these locations, and again, it will occur randomly, it's not gonna be there every single time, but you can loot the bodies that ambush you, and there's a good chance that a treasure map will spawn from those, just like they will at a gang hideout. So keep in mind, go to those locations, just ride back and forth, and you might notice you'll get ambushed, and it's a good opportunity to take advantage of that. Now, something else you can do that I found that's pretty cool, if you want to hogtie either other people or NPCs, you can actually do it instantly without having to like throw the rope around them and then do the animation. If you just run up to someone with the uh, lasso equipped, you'll sort of do like an instant lasso. You'll tackle them and then immediately start hog tying them. You won't have to go through the animation or anything like that, which is quite nice. So I will admit I'm not lassoing a ton of people. I'm certainly not lassoing many other players. Mostly it's just NPCs, but this is much more effective than, you know, aiming on them with left trigger, swinging the rope above your head and then throwing it onto them and then sort of catching up to them to lasso. Uh, this is much easier. So if you are going to do it, it's sort of a quicker way in which you can do that. If you're looking for a way to almost get an instant level four bond with your horse, by far the easiest way to do that is to just just simply lead it. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, go up to your horse, hit left trigger, and there should be an option to lead it by hitting triangle. And if you do this for like 30 minutes, you're gonna get your horse to bonded level four. Now, I definitely don't recommend AFKing when you're playing against other players, like if you're doing a race or a death match, that just ruins the experience. However, if you would like to AFK rubber band your controller while doing something like this, while you're not harming anyone else, I would totally recommend that. Basically, just walk around for 30 minutes, and uh, it, when you come back, your horse and yourself is going to be level 4 bonded. So that right there is incredibly easy to do, and it's a super fast way in which you can get a fully bonded horse. Something else you should do with other horses you encounter in the wild, just like in single player, check the saddlebags. The saddlebags come with a ton of valuables in them, food, tonics, provisions. The one thing I would recommend before checking the saddlebags is make sure the horse is calm. If not, they are going to literally kick you and that could actually kill you. And what's kind of funny is apparently no one seems to have a fuss about this. Like I literally just started stealing from this saddlebag right in front of a lawman 
who I kid you not was watching me do it the whole time and literally didn't do anything about it. So you don't get like crimes for anything like that. Uh, and what you do get is a lot of useful supplies that you can use on your journey every single day. Another thing that can be quite useful when riding on your horse, I'm sure you guys all know by now that sort of like auto ride thing you can do where if you set yourself on a path and then you actually pull up the cinematic camera, well, unlike single player in online, you can actually check the in-game options and menus. So the most useful thing that I found for this is to open up the map. You can see where you're going, you can check on the area around you, you can see what's happening on other parts of the world, and you can also just check on other stats that you might be focused on. And all this time, your horse will continue to gallop to the location in which you set. So that right there is once again incredibly convenient and something you might not have known you could do on your horse. I've also seen a lot of people complaining about this. When they call in their horse, instead of their normal one coming, they get scrawny nag or their backup horse. Well, that's because your horse has probably been injured. Now, if you don't have horse insurance, what you'll actually need to do is go to the in-game option menu, go to stables, and then pay to have your horse healed. Uh, if you do have horse insurance, it's probably just going to be like a one or two minute timer before you can actually get your horse back and then you won't actually have to pay anything. So open up the options menu, check stables, that might solve your problem. This was happening to me for a long time. I was consistently wondering why my backup horse was always getting called in. Well, that's because I hadn't properly healed my primary horse and the game was defaulting to the secondary one. So that's something to keep in mind right there. Another warning I can give for you guys, be careful when ordering supplies from the catalog. So for example, if you're ordering ammo and you go to the gun store, you're only gonna be able to order the maximum amount you can carry on your person. However, because things you order from the catalog go to your camp or the post office, you can order more than normal. So you have to be careful when buying the maximum amounts. Like for example, arrows here, if I wasn't paying attention, I would have accidentally bought $40 worth of arrows. I don't need to spend $40 on arrows. I can only have 40 at a time, which certainly doesn't cost that much. That only cost me like a dollar to fill up all my arrows. So just be careful when ordering from the catalog, especially if you use that max buy option, because if you're not paying attention, you might end up spending way more money than you need. I mean, at the end of the day, it's not like any of it goes to waste, but still, don't spend money unnecessarily. And last but not least today, if you encounter NPCs, you might notice that they have really cool hats on them. You can actually take these hats. Unfortunately, you won't be able to store them or save them on any outfits. Even if you create a persistent posse, you still can't save the hats on the outfits. Now, what's kind of cool is you can still get all of the unique hats from single player. Like for example, if you go to Ansberg and you actually go in the mine, you can actually find the miner's helmet which has like that light that uh, illuminates from it, which is incredibly useful, but unfortunately you won't be able to save it. So the second you join a new session, you're gonna end up losing out on that hat. So hopefully sometime in the future, Rockstar does end up adjusting that so that we can pick up hats from NPCs and other players and save them to our own outfits. But for now, just know that you can wear them, you just won't be able to save them. But anyways, that's all the information that I've got for you guys in this video today. Hopefully you did enjoy. That right there is 15 things you didn't know you could do in Red Dead Online. I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments down below though. Do you have any other helpful tips or tricks for us? Be sure to let us know down there. If you did go on to enjoy this video though, a like rating would of course be awesome. And subscribe to my YouTube channel if you are new or you like daily Red Dead Redemption 2 videos like this. With all the way guys, like I said, thanks so much for watching. Take care and I'll see you guys in the next video.